<laughs> hey, welcome to Hindsight, the podcast. I'm your host, Lee Jones, and I'm thrilled to embark on this journey of exploration with you. We often find ourselves reflecting on the choices we've made and wondering how our lives might have unfolded differently if we had taken a different path. Here's the beauty of hindsight. It gives us a chance to gain wisdom and learn from our past decisions. Look, this podcast is a platform to dig deep into those pivotal moments and uncover the invaluable lessons hidden within. <laughs> Look, I'm Lee Jones, your host, and I couldn't be more excited to have you on board. So let's dive right in and explore the fascinating realm of decisions on Hindsight the Podcast. When you look back in hindsight, everything is 2020. In hindsight, we make mistakes we're learning from. This. In hindsight, it should be your today and your tomorrow. In hindsight, it's so much clearer now. This is Hindsight the Podcast, and introducing your host, Lee Jones. Hold on, hold on, hold on a whole other page. I'm yapping while I'm. Yeah, okay, here we go. I see a countdown. I see a check mark by my name, but not by your name. Oh, green check mark. Oh, you're good. You're, okay. you're good. So we're going right now, and I'll, cool. I I may keep this in. I may not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, hi everybody. <laughs> hey, so welcome to Hindsight the Podcast. I'm your host Lee Jones, and I need you to get ready to be inspired because today I have the opportunity to chat with Clarissa Burt. Clarissa is a media personality, producer, director, accomplished writer, and Hold your seats, guys. A supermodel, former supermodel. She is currently the founder and CEO of In the In the Limelight Media, mm -hmm. shaping a multimedia landscape that has reached a global audience through platforms like Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV. But not just confined to screens, Clarissa is also an author of the internationally acclaimed best-selling book, The Self-Esteem Regime. Mm -hmm. And that should be enough, right? But no, there's more. <laughs> and this is really cool. In 2022, uh, Clarissa was knighted by the Royal Order of Constantine the Great and St. Helen, an honor that only 350 dames worldwide share. And she also met the Pope twice. twice. <laughs> 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 wow, you have done your homework. I wow. got it. I got it. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's an absolute privilege to have Clarissa okay. Burt with us yeah. today. Welcome to the show. How are you doing, very, Clarissa? Very kind. I'm doing really well in Arizona right now. It's hot, 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 but we are we're we're plowing through. Thanks again for having me. Oh uh, yeah. The show. It's so exciting. Absolutely. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yay. I tell you, I was I was going through um because I linked on to your to your Instagram mm -hmm. and just looking at your journey. So you're showing some things from now. You're showing some mm -hmm. things from the past, oh, some yeah. of your experiences yeah. as a model and some, you know, oh. other things. And it's just so it's just a beautiful Instagram page. Let me just keep it Thanks. simple. Like well, that. it's fun to reminisce with the old stuff. You know, when I brought on some of the social media team, of course, they're younger kids. Right. right. And they just I'm mostly girls. And so they just love all the old fashioned pictures. Like you have to post those. We have to put the people love looking at that stuff. I, <laughs> girls. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. You I've never t taken a selfie in my life. I have no idea what we're talking about. But if you yeah, don't you see the engagement? Look at the engagement. We've got engaged. All right, go ahead. You know, knock yourselves out with engagement. If you want to post, you know, post the old pics, go right ahead. I think I hope that it lands well because it's not me trying to continually live, you know, the glory days. It's me right, <laughs> saying right. okay to my team and we're having fun with that. So thanks for the compliment. Absolutely. So your experiences and accomplishments are remarkable. Um, can you take us back to your early years and share some experiences or influence? influences that you feel contributed to shaping yeah. the person you are today, oh, especially, yeah. <laughs> especially in the terms of your confidence and self-esteem. Yeah, absolutely. So here's how it kind of all started. And, and this is where they created the monster. Okay. So I become like, I'm regular, you know, blue collar family. My father worked three jobs when I was a kid, you know, that kind of thing. And, um, and so in the, in the kindergarten, you know, I used to, I was one of those kind of kids. Well, they told me that I was vaccinated with a phonograph needle. Okay. So that should tell you, that should tell you everything <laughs> right there. So I was one of these really gregarious, jump around, really happy, full of energy kids. 
And I love singing. Oh God, did I love singing, man. I used to, I know, I knew every song on the radio when I was a kid. Cause that's really all we had was a radio. I mean, there was only, we only had one TV in the house and that was barely on. So anyway, we, I didn't know a lot, all the words. So I was in kindergarten and I'll never forget. I was at Harris elementary school in Collingdale, Pennsylvania. And Mrs. Bailey, Mrs. Bailey, because we didn't do the Miss thing until the 70s. Mrs. Bailey would, you know, we'd get our little sit-upons and we'd sit behind the piano. And boy, I guess I just was belting these songs out. I don't even remember what it was. But I was elected Mary Poppins in the kindergarten play. Okay. So I remember that day well. And my mother came along, took Polaroids. I have three Polaroids from that day still still with me today. Oh, wow. Uh, in 19, June of 1965. And that'll tell you how old I am if you do the math. But anyway, so I get on stage and I'm telling you, as soon as I built it out, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, I got a standing ovation and I have never looked back since. I was hooked. And I knew <laughs> that, is, oh, that is an awesome story. <laughs> and I knew that in some way, shape, or form, I was going to be, you know, on stage. Fast forward, um, after you know, five years old, in third grade, they asked me to be a Dorothy in the kindergarten play, and my parents wouldn't let me because I had to get my mom. We were latchkey kids. My mom had gone back to work and I was the oldest. So I needed to get home and watch the other children, get the dinner ready, set the table. And I wasn't allowed to be Dorothy in the kindergarten play. Devastated me. Devastated me. It was a really pivotal moment for me. And it kind of shut me down until fast forward many years. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm living in this, I was graduated high school in New Jersey. I, I um, was living in New York city, wanted to be a model. I'll get through that story. It's real quick. I become, I'm taken by Wilhelmina in New York city and wind up uh, becoming a model um, where was I going with this story? God, I'll tell you how old I am. I forgot what the hell I was going to tell you. And so, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so I, you know, I, I, I get myself over to Europe and after the modeling years, I start working on television there. And that was the first time that I was back in front of an audience of a live audience from the time I was five until the time I was 30. It took me 25 years to get back in front of a live audience. And from there, you know, it went really well. Um, I worked on Italian television for many, many years. Uh, I worked on it as talent. I worked on it as behind the camera. I worked on it as producer of my own, you know, shows. And, and so again, it's really one of those things. And I think the, the, the most important message in all of this, and maybe a, a, a teaching point is, you know, you kind of know, people say, you know, what, how do I know? And I'm not real sure. You know, I knew from the time I was five years old that I wanted to be on stage and I wanted to be Rita Hayworth. I wanted to be Ava Gardner. I wanted to be, you know, dancing in in ball gowns across the stage with Fred Astaire. I wanted, you know, I wanted the bright lights, big city, and I definitely wanted a stage because I just love the, I love a set. Like I love a movie set. I love a television set. Don't tell me why. Ask me why, but it just lights me up. It lights me up. So what, is it that really lights you up? Even if it's just a flicker, mm-hmm. right? What lights you up? Nice. Nice. Mm-hmm. i tell you what. I went to one. Well, I went to a couple of them. But I went to one studio. And I've never acted. But I went mm-hmm. to <laughs> I went to one right. studio. I think it was in North right. Carolina. Right. And I was on the set of, because uh, it was a tour. Mm-hmm. But it was on the set of Under the Dome. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like crazy. Like, it's like, oh, wow. That's cool. So cool. Like, I wanted to, like, where's the script? Let me get something in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, Lee, I never had in my life, I've never had. And just to give you an idea, again, going back to kind of the message in all of this, you know, again, yeah. this is not to brag, but to t- I never had a modeling lesson. I never had a singing lesson. And I wound up being on radio in Italy and had an album. I never had an acting lesson. I wound up doing 18 different movies. Um, you know, I never had, it was just, I never had a lesson in it. You, nobody really teaches you this stuff. It's just that passion. It's that burning flame. And remember, sometimes it's a flicker that you kind of have to fan. You know what I mean? You got to fan right. that flicker a little bit. You've got to, you've got to, you've got to believe, right. you got to believe in that flicker. And, um, 
And that's, yeah, that's kind of how that all started. So I hope that answered your, it was a long winded answer for a very short that's question. That's a good answer. So. Great answer. <laughs> it was a pretty, it was a pretty wide open question too. So. <laughs> exactly. But man, I'm telling you, it just, you know, it's, it just, all that stuff floats your boat and talk about a business that's rife with rejection. You know, I called my book the self-esteem regime. And a regime is an organized way of doing things. Each chapter starts with a re-word. Um, rejection is, is something that's real and it can really, it can take you and break you. I mean, it will, it can shut you down. Rejection. You get rejected once, you get rejected twice, you get rejected that third time, you're like, hell no, I'm done. You know, or, you know, it's like, you gotta, you know, there are three things that you can do in life. You can, you can, uh, get, you can, uh, give up, give in, or give it all you got, you know, and I'm going with give it all you got. So there's, give, there's up, your, give, in, give in or, or give it all, give you, it all got. you got. I love That's it. it. That's it. <laughs> that is it, my friend. All right. So let me go fast forward just a little bit to present day. Mm-hmm. And, um, as the founder and the CEO of, in the limelight media, mm-hmm. you've built a diverse media, multimedia platform. What prompted mm-hmm. you to create this platform and how do you see it contributing to the larger conversation around empowerment and personal growth, maybe? Well, empowerment and personal, personal growth, because the content that we that we work on here is just that. It's educational, it's empowering, it's enlightening. Uh, it's the kind of like, for example, you know, people have come to me with shows uh, for politics. Sorry, I'm not doing a political show. I won't do it. I won't do it because I don't want to be confrontational here in any way. And we got plenty of other people handling that really well. I oh, yeah. don't, I don't want I don't want to be put under attack in any way. It's not the way I want to live my life. Uh, religion, same thing. And that doesn't mean, uh, you know, it doesn't mean I, I don't, we all praise who we praise. It's all good stuff. I don't want to be controversial in any way. I don't want to be attacked in any way. Um, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Well, rock and roll is okay, but sex and drugs, we try to stay away from. So, you know, we just want to keep it clean over here. You know, Disney had said once when he was building Disneyland, I would never make a movie that my kids couldn't see. Mm. And that's kind of the, that's the content that we, uh, that we, um, underscore and highlight, we spotlight here. We want really good, happy, healthy, um, things and content that people can learn from and take away that they can ponder, think about, and then implement into their, into their daily lives. Okay. You mentioned it, uh, just in, in, uh, just a minute ago, but your book, The Self-Esteem Regime, mm-hmm. has garnered international acclaim. And can you share the driving force behind writing this book and what yeah. inspired you to delve into the realm of self-esteem and empowerment? Because, you know, uh, first of all, people say, what the hell, Clarissa? Like, you're look at you and your life and all of your successes. I mean, you? Self-esteem? A super? Mo- yeah. Because self-esteem doesn't discriminate, number one, and it goes really, really broad and really, really deep. And, you know, a lot of who we are comes from, you know, our generational, right, our our, our, our family tribes, our tribes, right? You know, right. our familiar, familiar uh, tribes and, you know, the generational traumas that they then, um, that they then drop on us, you know, when we're kids and we're not, we won't know what's going on. Like when I was a kid, nobody talked about this stuff. There was no personal development and self-improvement, like self esteem What the hell? We didn't, those words didn't exist when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Right. And if I were to walk into any of the three bookstores back in the day, which were borders, borders, Walden books and Barnes and Noble, um, there was a very small section Lee and it was in the back and it was called self-help. And that's where I lived. I lived in that little teeny weeny section and I would pick up those books and I would read those books. And that's where it all started because it was the one place I could go to, to get it. Cause you didn't talk about this stuff back in the day. Like, you know, we would be, we would have a neighborhood full of friends. Like this is the, these are the days when you go out, you know, when you hear about drinking from the water hose and, you know, boom, you know, cars with no uh, seat belts. Man, that was my generation. Right. So we're out and you came home when the lights went on. Like you were out all day. Nobody knew where the hell you were. And nobody th- was worried about somebody snatching you. Right. You know what I mean? So oh, yeah. these were the times when this kind of thing was not discussed. And we would be like really good friends in the neighborhood. And I found out 30, 35 years later 
that my best girlfriend's father, two of my best girlfriend's fathers were, you know, molesting them. We didn't know that as kids. Like we didn't talk about this stuff. Right. Right. So this was the place that we would go to or that I went to, to get some answers, to find some solace, to get a couple of, to get some sub sustenance, substance, you know, some, it's so it kind of shored up my existence so that I could make it through to the next day, next week, next, you know, next year of my life because things were rough, you know, and I'm not going to lie. A lot of us don't like talking about what was, some of us came along, some of us came from really beautiful parents and beautiful backgrounds and more power to you. And God love you. That's amazing. I'm happy for you. But a lot of people didn't. And a lot of people don't know what to do with that. And that's Mm. where, you know, wherein lies all the toxicity that we talk about today and why there is so much dysfunction, especially in love relationships. Like we can kind of make it through with work and work relationships. We have to because we need the paycheck, right? Um, we can make it through, you know, to get to church on Sunday because, you know, we, we want to or we have to or the family says we got to. Okay, great. Go. It's fantastic. <clears throat> but, you know, what we're bringing, if we are not bringing a whole self, You know, you've done the work, you've done the shadow work, you've brought up your demons, you've faced all this stuff. And by the way, not easy work. When you bring a non-whole self to the table and expect to have a healthy, happy, healthy relationship, it's not going to happen. Not going to happen. So my work is to incite people, to invite people, and to, to nudge you, to prompt you to do the work. Right now... The only bookstore that we have left in the United States is Barnes and Noble. You know, we can walk into the bookstore. We've got obviously Amazon, Barnes and Noble online. <clears throat> it, but personal development. Now the section is called personal development. Yeah, and it is a sure billion is. dollar industry. It's a billion dollar industry. Well, what does that lead us to believe? The problems are still there. The issues are still the same. Nothing has really changed except. The change that we have to, we want to see in ourselves, right? There is, there in lies the change. Go pick up the books, go do the work, find the courses, find the classes. Today with online, you can find meetup groups and you can find all kinds of support um, that you may need in order to be what I call a better person tomorrow than you are today. You know, people say, you know, we would, you know, self esteem, never compare yourself to anyone else. Well, yeah. I absolutely self-esteem 101 never compare yourself to anyone else but here's what you really need to be doing comparing yourself to the person you were yesterday all right Hmm. what are you going to do today that's one step better than who you were then are you going to forgive somebody you're going to pick somebody pick uh, pick up the phone and call somebody and maybe apologize i'm making it up as i go uh are you going to hold the door open for somebody are you going to let that jerk in traffic who's you know go ahead sir go ahead and many times i find myself doing things that 10 years ago would have pissed me right off (laughs) today it's just like sir if you're that in that much of a hurry please go right ahead you know um walk through the supermarket and just say to somebody oh i love that top that looks so good on you never saw this woman before in my life i'll never see her again but here's the deal on that. It's a little teeny thing. Took three seconds. I made her feel good and I made myself feel good. Next. Yeah. It can be something as simple as that. It's a teeny weeny little acts of kindness that they all add up. And, you know, you know, universe sees all. And when you're putting out good, good comes back. I, I mean, we all know. I'm not teaching you anything when I tell you that. But what I am doing is reminding you that that's exactly what you need to be doing. Yeah, and that's it, right? Because a lot, like you said, a lot of the stuff is you know it, right? But you get bogged down in things, right? Yep. In your own issues, and you forget yeah. about these things. So that's a yeah. great reminder. I wrote down to compare yourself to who you were yesterday. That's amazing. I Absolutely, you got to, and you do that every day, right? You Absolutely. do that every day. So cool. So before I dive into the book and ask you a bunch of questions specifically about your ideologies or how how the book is, you know, written, I want to ask you about you. So right. as a former supermodel with a successful career that spanned years, you've been in the spotlight and faced the pressures of the industry. So looking back, can you describe a specific moment or experience from your modeling days that challenged your self-esteem and how did you 
feel about yourself during that time and how did you navigate those feelings? So that's a lot of questions. That's okay. It's all good. And and by the way, before I get to that, I didn't answer the other question properly. And that is why did I write this book? I took a look at the women that were around me, my mother, my grandmother, and others as I was going through life. Uh, my mother didn't, never wanted her picture taken. My mother was a beautiful woman, never wanted her picture taken. Oh my God, I just, you know, I kind of look so horrible in pictures. Ah. And she had this thing about weight. Oh my God, did my mother have a thing about weight? Never gain an ounce, pull your stomach in, this whole thing about weight. All right. And I realized that, you know, that was kind of probably generational, but still it was a thing that she had, it was self-imposed. My grandmother, beautiful woman, she needed to lose weight. So there you see the generational there. Ah, she she didn't need to lose weight. She thought she needed to lose weight. Beautiful woman, beautiful body, beautiful woman. Takes two diet pills one day, chokes on them, perforates her esophagus and spends the next six weeks in the hospital. And I'm looking at these women going, mom, you're so beautiful. I don't understand. Wow. Okay. Gosh, grandma, you're so, you're like in my eyes, you're everything. Why would you have done this to yourself? You know, so you kind of look around and you go, okay, I'm a little girl. I'm watching this stuff. All right. Fast forward to other women. You know, here I am a supermodel back in the day and I am working with some of the world's most beautiful women ever. And most women would love to be, you know, half of what some of these girls are or have their bodies or their faces or they were really God's beautiful creatures. And you could see that there was, you know, there were things that they were doing as well. Not all, but you know, not all the girls, but some of the girls, uh, anorexia, bulimia, drugs, alcohol, toxic relationships. Like, you know, just because you're, you're working as a, a supermodel, again, it doesn't discriminate. Remember, self-esteem doesn't discriminate. So I'm looking at all these girls and years in, I go, well, what's the correlation between the girl who's, you know, on the Valentino runway and my mother in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania? Like, where's that? What's going on there? And of course, you know, the answer is there's a lack of happy, healthy self-esteem. And so, you know, for me, this is kind of a mission. I'm, I'm, I would like to think that I'm everybody's rah-rah session. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so there's the answer to that. The, yeah, getting to, you know, the work, the things that the rejection and work, um, uh, certainly there, there were, especially in the modeling years, you know, I had to leave a country, i.e. the United States back in the day, because my look didn't work here in the 80s. The 80s was very much blonde hair, blue eyes, mini skirts, jumping with huge smiles on the beach. And it, that wasn't me. I was much more of a, of a sophisticated look. So I knew that in Europe, my or I was told, in fact, and I followed, you know, what they told me to do. I went to Europe and that's where I stayed for 30 years. And I worked very, very well there. But there were definitely rejections along the way. There were jobs that I was up for that I would have just loved to have gotten and somebody else got. Um, and you don't know why. There's never – because, you know, here's what I did learn from the from the industry. You're too tall. You're not tall enough. You're too skinny. You're not skinny enough. You're, you're too dark. Your hair's too dark. It's not dark enough. Your face – you know, you, you, you know, it's, it's, it's always you're too much of something and not enough of something else. Mm. And what you have to understand is that you are who you are and you need to stay – you need to be stand strong in that stead and not let anybody else move you. Right. So that was something that was very, very, um, very, you know, um, important as a lesson Uh, in the television world. There was, uh, you know, there was obviously, you know, about, you know, you've heard about the casting couch. Um, For me, the cast, I never saw a couch in my life. I'm very proud to say I've most all of my success has been, you know, given or granted because I worked hard uh, and I showed up and I was, I was punctual and I smiled and I toiled and I worked hard and I, you know, I did the job that I was paid to do. Nothing was given to me. And here's another lesson. Nothing is given to you. So, you know, <laughs> you know you're going to pay that piper sooner or later. I'd like to tell everybody that that's not true, but you're going in. And, and here's the other thing, God, you know, half of the, half of the, the journey I half of the satisfaction is the work that you've put into it. I mean, what fun is it if everything's given to you? You know, I, and I, you know, I'm a baby boomer, so forgive me when I say these participation trophies. Something our, our generation just we just don't get it. You know, it's it's all good. We want everybody. If you're going to give everybody something for nothing, then they're never going to strive to be anything better than what they are. And by the way, not every not every kid is supposed to be a soccer superstar. He's supposed no. to be something else. So let's foment, let's let's foster that. 
You know, let's take him, you know, let's let him play soccer and not get a a trophy. Okay, that's fine. But what is he good at? Let's find that out, right? So anyway, um, and I digress when I I go down that path. But it's all, again, if you think deeply about it, it's all about self-esteem. Right. Right. Even that the, the analogy I just gave you is all about self-esteem. The kid that really worked hard and was propensed at being a, an athlete got the trophy. The kid that worked hard and probably was not as propensed to be an athlete, but he was going to be the next computer scientist. Do you know what I mean? Let's yeah. foment that. You know what I mean? Let's foment that. So, uh, uh, okay. Um, and so I hope, again, long-winded answer for <laughs> – <laughs> um, but so as I was working on television, there was a, there was someone, uh, who was a show host and he, in a very veiled way had made me understand that, you know, he really, really liked me. And, you know, he, so he sent flowers to, we were on a, a shoot one day, he sent flowers to my room and I knew <clears throat> what was going on and I paid no mind to it. I paid no attention to it and I never worked with him again. Mm. Now I was working. I had worked with him many, many times, but at a certain point, all of a sudden, he decided. And he was a married man, but you know, Italian. Let's not even go down that path. But you know, married man, and I got the flowers to my room one day, and I and I went, oh, okay, here we go. And there was a card that made you know it was certainly made me understand. <clears throat> and I I paid no mind to it. I just didn't even address it. Right. And I, ne- and I never worked again. So there is in as another form of rejection. That's something that women go through frequently, right? Which Absolutely. is unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, which is unfortunate. But at that point, you go, "Wow, you know, it was I not good enough? Was I not? You know, you, well, okay, no. It just means your your va- your path has now veered. You're supposed to be now working with somebody else. It's bigger or better, or you're supposed to be taking another path. So. Again, whereas it's unfortunate, you know that, you know, um, it's just, it's just a redirect, another reword, it's redirection. It's not re every rejection is redirection. Mm. Okay. So let's jump into some more questions geared towards the book and you are already in it because <laughs> with the self-esteem, <laughs> but can you describe the core message or principle that you believe, uh, can have the most profound impact on someone's journey to self-discovery and self-worth because i know that's one of the principles maybe principles in the word but that's one of the core things that yeah. you need to do is self-discovery right and self-worth it really is it most definitely is so there's a whole bunch of self self-discovery self-worth self-reliance self-possession belief self-control you know it's all about again um i call you to call these books you know we call them self-help first of all they're first off they're not called shelf help so make mm-hmm. sure if you're going to do the work do the work you know buy the book do the work not this but any book i don't care just you know just do the work on yourself because that's really important it's important because it is your sacred duty to be the best that you can possibly be for yourself first and foremost, but for everyone else that you will encounter along this lifetime. And, um, you know, again, they, I always forget the saying, but it's, you know, um, something about the tides raising up all ships and, you know, high tides raise all ships. And that's basically, you know, the idea behind this, you know, the idea is wanting the, the good for, yes, certainly for yourself, but so that you can impart that good on others. It is again, your sacred duty. Somebody had come up with a word um i was afraid that i love it's called go guided and i love that yes please go guided by happy healthy self-esteem um and i think that that is really um the most important thing so you know uh i also believe in the four pillars of self-esteem which is look good feel good be good and your greater good look good we know what that is you look in the mirror you're feeling fly it's all good you've got a lilt in your step you face your day with you know with higher self-confidence you just do i'm sorry yeah just do feel good (laughs) feel good is your diet your exercise your nutrition because it all works as one right Right. brain and body body and brain mind it's all we all know we've heard enough about all of that that make that you make sure that you're fueling your temple the way that you need to be fueling your temple for you know for i don't know self-reliance you can now rely on your body to be getting you where you need to go in a very healthy way and we've got to be really careful these days to be even more mindful of what we're eating what we're drinking you know and the environment because you know i don't want to get on that path either but you can we can see that there are there are different variables now that we didn't think about 10 years ago or even five years ago um 
uh, be good. You know, you want to be sh- taking care of your leadership, your business, your, uh, finances, all of those things that really make you are really being good about, um, who you are and how you're living this life, what you're bringing to the table, uh, and being mindful of, you know, how you are, um, you know, there's, I love the saying, it says, uh, you know, it, people are always going to be wowed by your accolades, but they're always going to remember how you made them feel. Yes, 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 yes. How did you make them feel when you were sitting there telling them you know, about you? Like, and at my example right now, you're asking me about me. People love talking about themselves, love mm-hmm. talking about themselves. But I want to make sure that I'm very mindful that when I just stop every once in a while and give the teaching point or something I can share or something that I can part that somebody can take away. I want to be able to give some, something to someone to take away so that they can think about it too. You know, this is not all about me. This is about you know, the collective self-esteem again you know this is the raw raw session for anyone that might be listening to us right now um and then the greater good that's paying it forward paying back tithing volunteering you know doing what's right um i'm very very big on people say well okay well how do you get started on self-esteem here's a question give me the your top five in your value system give me your top five well, people go, oh, God, a value system. Jeez, I don't know what the heck's a value. I don't know what – people don't know. And that's one of the things that you need – that is your blueprint in life, Lee, your value system. And here's mine. I take the high road, which means honesty, integrity, gratitude, and honor. Mm. And I will be radically honest with you. You will never get a lie out of me. Uh, if you ask me if the jeans make your butt look fat – I might say, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I might guide you to another pair of jeans, but I'm never going to stand. Oh, you look great when it doesn't make you. I'm just radically honest that way. Right. Not always everybody's best friend, but if you want an answer, an honest answer to the question. And let me ask you this. Wouldn't it be, what kind of world would it be? What kind of world would we be living in if everyone was honest? Hmm. Yeah, can you even see that? Can you even see at that at this point? <laughs> exactly. So, on integrity. Okay. Well, integrity. What do you actually? Who are you when no one else is in the room? Who are you? Think about it. And that's a huge one right there. You know, it's like, wow. Okay. Who am I when no one else is in the room? I don't know. I'm not. Yeah. Your value system is that important. These are the moral principles, right? That that are, are the distinction between right and wrong good and bad behavior. That's integrity. Gratitude. We know what that is. You know, we know exactly what we need to be thankful for. I mean, or if you don't, you better start working on that list fast. (laughs) And then honor again. Um, Again, I'll go back to who are you when nobody else is in the room. How do you treat strangers? How do you treat people that you know can do nothing for you? Can't do a damn thing for you. How do you treat them? Do you treat them the same way that, you know, you treat a prospective employer or your employer or the girl that you're interested in or husband, wife, or your parents or your best friend? How do you treat people that can do nothing for you? Are you the leader that you would want to follow? There's your honor right there. Because when we talk about honor, we usually think about the military, right? But honor is much bigger than that, much broader than that. Honor is doing the right thing, Lee. Yeah, I was on I was on Survivor uh, in two I don't know twelve years ago, something like that. I was on Survivor one Survivor actually, but I was on Italian Survivor. <laughs> Excuse me, and we had a real real quick. We had an exercise where we had to get in a helicopter and fly to another island or some damn thing. We were down in Nicaragua, and. And I was with the two bikini babe girls, and I loved them. They were great. They were. I was already fifty three when I did this, so these bikini girls were fabulous. They were young and in bikinis, and they were gorgeous. And we got along famously. They were great. So they were in the helicopter with me. So okay. of course they show up, and they're you know all their bikini you know buddhaliciousness, and they get with that the, the you know with the pilot. And they go, hey, Mister Pilot, can you do us a favor? Um, because these are like, like you can imagine what a heliport in Nicaragua looks like, right? So, so they go, can you go over there into that little kiosk and get us something to eat? We're starving. We are, we're doing Survivor and we haven't eaten for and forever. So this guy, of course, goes over to the thing and he brings back this brown paper bag full of junk food. 
you know, okay. your yeah. candies and your crackers and whatever can cookies. And they take it and they get in the back and I'm in the front and you know where I want. And all of a sudden I feel this tap on my shoulder and they're proffering food to me. And I went, oh, oh, oh no, thanks. Thanks. No. Now, does that make me a goody two shoes? No. It makes me someone that's in a game where there are rules and there is a right and a wrong. And I would have been distinctly advantaged. You know, look, maybe I would have only had three crackers or four cookies. I don't know. But everyone else that was playing that game in the other helicopters didn't right. have that advantage. It was wrong. It was morally wrong for me. Now, was I dying? No. Was I entubed in a hospital and needed the food desperate? No. But I was in the middle of a game, again, where there are rules. And I'll tell you something, my anxiety would not have allowed me to, to I would have, if the anxiety would have killed me had I eaten one morsel of what they had offered me. Does it? Yeah, and here's the funny part about that. So I now can look in the mirror and feel real good about myself. I did the right, right thing. Yeah, they, yeah. they, of course, now that now there was a there was a divide between us, right? Because a, they were afraid I might say something. I would never do that. Like I'm not I'm not gonna rat you out. I would never do that. That's another honorable thing, right? I didn't rat them out. That's between them and their divine source it's not between it's not <laughs> my, you know, like you knock yourselves out do whatever you want to do but at the same time it put this it, it did put a division you know between mm -hmm. us because now whereas we were really good friends i think you know when you get when you put a mirror up to somebody and give them reason to take a look at themselves you're the bad guy mm. you know so are you the leader that you would want to follow Interesting. So a great story. Great story. How did how did a uh, survivor uh, you said it was over in where was it? It was an, it, well, it, uh, you know, it was Italian survivor and Italian they took us survivor. To, yeah. It was Italian celebrity survivor and they took us to to Nicaragua because, you know, they wanted us on an island somewhere and we went to Nicaragua, but yeah. Um, That's crazy. Yeah, How'd you do? Yeah. I won. There you go. <laughs> I just wanted to put that out there. Let's close it out perfectly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so I hope this kind of answers, you know, the why I wrote the book, the how I wrote the book, the way that I want um, people to invite into their lives, yeah. the whole idea of I really want to be a better person tomorrow than I am today. I really want to be the leader that I would want to follow. You know, mm -hmm. I really want to be um, – you know, um, self-sacrificing at times if I need to be, I really want to stand on principle, Do you know, and people are, Oh, Christ, Carson, you're a little heavy. Jesus. What the heck? You know, like, uh, well, you're lighting up. Okay. Okay. You know, but, and, and, you know, so again, Look, I don't look, by the way, I don't shove this in people's faces. I don't hold up mirrors every day. I let everybody do their thing. But if you're going to come to me and ask me things, you know, yeah, I get real jazzed about this kind of thing. I get very, because I know what hurt is. I know what betrayal is. I know what, uh, you know, trust issues are. I know I, I got all that at a very, very young age. And I will tell you, it hurts it really hurts. Um, so, and we all know that. So, uh, um, you know, I don't want to hurt anybody. Mm. You know, you cannot heal. Yeah. You cannot heal in the same environment that hurt you, which is another right. reason why there are times when you need to just pull away sometimes. You know, you've got to be able to – um to take that place and take that space. Some people are going to be offended by it. Some people are going to be hurt. Some people are going to get their nose out of joint. Other people are going to be irked, but therein lies the courage that you're going to have. Cause this work by the way is not easy and you're going to have to have the courage to reparent yourself, which is it's it, it, an interesting go and you're going to have to stick with it. You got to stick with it. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, okay, so let's let's look at this. Let's see how how do I want to say it? self. I'm going. I'm I'm gonna keep pounding self esteem, right? Because yeah. that's the message we're trying to get across. Yeah. And and self esteem can often be a complex and deeply mm -hmm. personal trait. And in yeah. your opinion, what are some 
common misconceptions people might have about self-esteem and how does your book aim to address them? Well, first of all, people think that self-esteem or happy, healthy, high self-esteem is narcissism. And it, they are complete, two complete different things. I get the question all the time. And you know, narcissism is the lack of self-esteem. So mm. that's that, and that's a whole other pathology. We don't even, you know, want to go down that path. So that's one the first thing that I would tell you. Um, as far as you know, the rest of it, it's like you know, you got to figure out like what's your purpose? Like, what are we? What's the purpose? Your belief systems, right? We've heard heard about that a million times, and then kind of worry about also the toxic emotions. You must be careful with the toxic emotions that you need to be freeing yourself from. I mean, I t- I talked about before um, the um, generational uh, traumas, right? The generational traumas that we've all. In- some of most of us have encountered they're they're what are known as ancestral shadows right a lot of these are the yeah. secrets the secrets that must be brought out and spoken about not spoken about right um and so you have to be really careful about not, i i often say this this is what i live by the toxic stops here the toxic hmm. that has been foisted on me, thrown on me, um, you know, that I, and you, I'm not just me on all of us, right? You know, of we've course. got, you yeah. know, uh, what it's, what has been thrown on you has got to be, um, it's, you stop it. You got to stop it. The cancer stops here. The toxic stops here. Not one more day, draw that line in the sand and then start doing the work. And it's not, again, you know, you're the one that, you know, you're the chosen one because you chose yourself and you're the one that's going to do the work. You know, there's a, there's a book by Mark Wallen called shake the family tree. It didn't start with you. Mm. Here we go with the generational stuff. Um, and so, um, that's yeah. a great perspective. Yeah. I mean, it, it really is yeah. because when you, you know, sometimes, and yeah, that's kind of getting deep into some weeds, but you know, yep. things, how people treat you. Mm hmm. Is gen is is typically as a result of some experiences they may have had. Yeah, yeah. Right. There's also like betrayal trauma, like There's that betrayal stuff. Trauma. That yeah. stuff is nasty. And and if you had a mother who was betrayed by her by her your father, let's say, right? And mm-hmm. of course, now all oh, sorry about that. All of that now means um, that you as a child are going to be living in a home where all you hear is all men suck. Yeah. You know, you as a young boy are going to take that in one way. Your sister is going to take that in a whole different way. And when you both go out into your life path, how do you think that that's going to play out? Right. Right. So what are you being taught? Who are you listening to? Right. Who did you listen to? Obviously, it was your, you know, your mom, your dad, your parents, your caregivers, your whatever it was. What did they teach you? You know, what isn't what doesn't stand up? What, you know, what's not working for you and how, what are you going to do? Because now it works on you, right? It works, it's, it, it, it's your path, it's your life and you got to make it right. You got to be the better person more than you are today. And sometimes that is going to mean a boatload of forgiveness. Yeah. It's going to mean a boatload of forgiveness. So, Ooh. you know, here's the other deal. We talk about, you know, you ha- well, you got to honor your parents no matter what. People go, huh? What do you mean? I don't know. God, and he was a drunkard and he left us and he beat us and he, or she did this. And it. honor is a weapon that will keep their dysfunction from overtaking you. I'll say it again. Honor your parents no matter what, because that honor is the weapon that you will use to keep their dysfunction from overtaking you. It keeps your heart from being damaged. And it's really, you know, remember that it's about what they believed about themselves and projected onto you, right? right? So it's not about them. Stop making it about your mother and your father and your my dad and my mother. It's about you moving past their dysfunction. Beautiful. 
Yeah. So, you know, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> deep stuff. When I say to you, when I say to you, self-esteem goes really broad and really deep. It's oh, yeah. not, you know, self-esteem is not never compare yourself to anyone else. And don't forget to say your affirmations. You know, it's so much more <laughs> when you go to, you know, when you take a deep dive down this, right, it's right. crazy stuff. Yeah. So you have given a lot of advice. So this, this, question could be tongue-in-cheek, but what advice would you give to young women who are struggling with low self-esteem? Yeah, well, stop it. <laughs> I know. You've given a lot of examples. Stop it. You know, strategies. I mean, here's the deal. The regime, <laughs> I call the book The Self-Esteem Regime. Why regime? An organized way of doing things. Put your big girl panties on. Stop listening to everybody that are naysayers. Turn off the news and start thinking about how you can make yourself a better person in order to make those around you better people so that we can all make this world a better place in which to live. Because when you're playing small, you're not playing for all. I'm going to have a whole page full of notes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I love it. Hey, so thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you for the self-esteem uh, talk there. I just want to shift gears a little bit, mm-hmm. if you don't mind. Mm-hmm. Um, being knighted sounds like something out of a fairy tale. <laughs> Can you give us a glimpse into that unforgettable moment mm-hmm. when you were bestowed this honor by the mm-hmm. Royal Order of Constantine and uh, Constantine the Great and St. Helen. I yeah. want to make sure I say everything right. It's the, so- it's the Sovereign Royal Order of Cappadocia, and Cappadocia is in Turkey. It's a place Turkey. in Turkey. Uh-huh. Uh, Constantine the Great and St. Helen. And what I didn't know at the time is that St. Helen is Constantine the Great's mother. And mm. um, yeah, so yes, a, a, a very, very, just such an amazing honor. Uh, I was knighted last June in Las Vegas. The prince uh, and and a lot of the royalty came over from Europe, and there were twelve of us that were knighted. Um, and twelve women and twelve men, I believe it was. And um, yeah, they they I was I was nominated. Uh, the nomination passed. I was you know happy to to accept. Um, and it's, 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 it's a recognition, but more than that, it is the volition of wanting, again, even with the Knight's Code, for example, uh, it's about honor, doing the right thing, helping those in need, um, you know, using, um, um, your resources to be able, whatever they may be to help people. And, and so again, for the common good, it's not about my title it's about what I can do now, um, to help people in the common good. And that's, that's what I believe I'm doing with the book. It's what I believe in what I'm doing in every podcast and interview that I put out there. September is national self-improvement month. I'll be doing a lot then too. Um, because I really do believe that, especially in these times, Lee, after COVID, people, you know, suffered a lot of loss in three years. And that is, you know, loss of jobs, loss of money, loss of family, loss of friends, loss of loved ones, loss of hope, loss of, you know, loss, just loss. People are really feeling lost right now. Um, and they need, they need, you know, kind of the, the, the beacons of light, um, mm-hmm. the, the hope that they can find and they can find hope especially in the work that they will do on themselves, the work that they will find, go into, again, Amazon, personal development, just put it in, you get a whole bunch of stuff coming up. We'll walk into, (laughs) you know, if you can walk into a Barnes and Noble store, go to the personal development, you'll find my book there, which is great. But, and again, the self-esteem regime, I'd love for you to be able to do the work there. And look, this book is not a read about self-esteem. For me, this is a manual. It's a mission and it's a movement. And my book walks you chapter by chapter through case studies, affirmations, reviews, clarion call, uh, the clarion call, Clarissa's corner. Um, there are all kinds of things in here that make it an easy read, but the work you will do is going to be very personal to you, obviously, but it's going to be, it's going to take courage. So, you know, don't come at personal development and personal and, and, um, uh, and self-improvement um, thinking that it's, it may be a walk in the park because you will do what's called the shadow work. And the shadow work is the work that 
is all the stuff that's been stuffed down that mm-hmm. you overlooked that you didn't address because you know what Lee sooner or later you're going to pay the piper and I paid the piper when I turned about 26 27 and I fell into a very deep and dark depression Mm -hmm. And it wasn't my first. And along my path, I knew, you know, there were a couple of other times in my lifetime that I was so overwhelmed that depression just happened. It was just okay. Well, you know, and I'll tell you something, when you get into that kind of overwhelm, you will shut down. Your brain will shut you down. It's like, okay, we're shutting you down because you need a vacation. We're shutting you down because you need to do the work. We're shutting you down because we understand the pain has gotten so great. The pain is there for you to learn from. So, you know, so, you know, be ready. I'm not going to say everybody's going to fall into a depression. I'm telling you that this is what happened to me in order to push me forward. These were my drivers. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. And so that's, that's how I can sit here today and be as happy and up and as bubbly as I am because I took a self-esteem test yesterday with somebody. I graduated high school with somebody who does this work and I took his test and he goes, Chris, he's God, you, you know, like self-esteem, you're like, you have z- what they call zero friction. Uh, you mm. have zero friction. You like, you got right, 100% right. on this stuff. And I went, well, thanks Steve. Cause I wrote a book about it. So that makes me feel really good. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> So I didn't write a book. It wasn't just blowing smoke up somebody's, you know, whatever. It was, you know, I, I believe passionately about doing the work on yourself and being and making sure that you keep anything that's not working for you, anything that's not serving you and all that toxic stuff out of your life. But yeah. you've got to do the work. Awesome. And that was my, well, you, you answered the follow-up question too. What is the expectations or what are the, not necessarily duties, but the expectations once you, once you did become a dame, right? So uh, mm-hmm. you explained that. Yeah. So now I'm going to go to the next interesting thing I found interesting, and I hope the listeners are interested about this as well. Um, you've had in, the incredible opportunity to have not just one, but two private audiences with Pope John Paul II. Mm-hmm. Could you share a moment or a memory from those meetings that still feel surreal? To you? <laughs> well, first of all, your girl is one of those kind of people. That I don't stand in line for nothing. Like I yeah. will not stand in line. I don't like standing in <laughs> line. I don't care if it's a movie. I don't care if it's at the supermarket. I don't care if it's at the airport. I won't stand in a line. In fact, I will always be the one. You know how they all, everybody stands to get on the plane at the gate. Nope. I'm sitting and I'm going to be the last one on and I'm going to be the first one <laughs> off. I just, but I was always like that. Even at school as a kid, like I would same thing with the school bus. I'm not standing in that damn line. You go ahead. I'll be there in a minute. You know? So, yeah. and it's just cut. I always was on time. Don't get me wrong, but I just wasn't a line. St- well, for the Pope, I stood in line. There were 12 of us that went in that day. And, um, <laughs> and I did, I know, well, what can I tell you? We all have our thing. Yeah. You know, we all have quirks. And so I, but I, you know, obviously for the Pope, uh, it was, look, I, 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 I just, but it was, this whole thing for me was like a dream. It was a dream come true. You know, I was living in Rome. He obviously is at the Vatican in Rome. So we were homies. And, you know, the next thing I know, I get called in by the Vatican for the social work that I had been doing. Look, I'm not married and I don't have children, right? So when I was working, a lot of the weekends, I would go, I was called by a lot of charities and benefits and, you know, you know, um, 501c3s, will you come, and, you know, on this day? And I goes, we're having an event and we would love it if you would come. And yes, I will absolutely come. Do not pay me. I don't want flowers and I don't want the damn plaque. Take the money and put it towards your, you know, put put it towards your cause. All I ask is that you send a car to come get me and that the car bring me home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I would really help them cut costs. Of course, I always got the damn flowers and the plaque. Okay, whatever. But I asked you not to do that, but they did. And you say thank you. But I always went. And because, because I, you know, working on television there, I, you know, garnered celebrity status and it, it helped the cause. Right. So I always went and a lot of the celebrities say, yeah, sure. I'll come to your charity event, but you got to pay me. Mm. And so for me, this is, was obviously my way of giving back. Right. Remember when I talked about the greater good giving back, it was a small thing, but it was something I could do on the weekend. So but most Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, I was going somewhere you know, for all, and Italy is like California, right? It's like long and narrow. So <laughs> some of these damn car rides could have been nine, 10 hours long. Yeah. Yeah. 
And people say, well, couldn't you have taken a flight? Yes, but I wanted to get home. So if I had stayed there, then they, they would have had to pay for the hotel. And they and then I probably wouldn't get a flight out until like one the next day. And now I'm waiting, you know, so I didn't want to do all that. So yes, so I would go and do that. Well, the Vatican picked up on the social work. Don't ask me how. Like I said, we lived in the same town. And um, and I got called in for my social work, all those years of social work. So that was extraordinary, extraordinary. So how, I mean, when you were there, like, I don't know, I, I guess that's too personal, but yeah. how did you, I mean, do you, do you have a conversation with him or does he just Oh, bless okay. You? Oh yeah. So well, he's on the stage. He's on the uh-huh. stage. He was at the Vatican. That's because now we've got a whole theater. It's the auditorium uh, at the Vatican full of people that had come in for national volunteer day. Okay. Full of people. And there were 12 of us that were, um, for some reason, were going to be um, recognized by the Pope. Now, the Pope was very old at that time, and I have a picture of it. You can probably even find it. Uh, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, and you, I, I, you know, went over and I knelt down and I took his hand and he, you know, made the sign of the cross on my forehead for me. And I just said, you know, look, you don't get, you know, it's not like you're sitting down to tea, right? Mm-hmm. You get, you know, you get, you get a little audience, you sit, you kneel, you say a few words, he does the sign of the cross. And I, what I said is, thank you so much for the work that you're doing for, you know, in the world, you know, thank right. you so much for, because he was so beloved. He was, he was in my lifetime, the most beloved, you know, Pope. And here's a guy that got shot, you know, and then he, mm-hmm. you know, he, he went into prison and pardoned his, 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 his um, assailant, was Halen. Is that the right word? I think it is. Yeah. The guy that shot him. And, yeah. uh, you know, like the, he made a thing about that after that, then they had the Pope mobile, which was right. where he would stand in that plexiglass thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you know, so, uh, the plexiglass uh, vehicle that would drive him around. But, um, it was, it was, it was a flash in time, if you will. Uh, but it was still, there were still two of those I did and they were private audiences and they are considered to be, all, you know, in the impossible. Nobody gets the private audience with the Pope, especially then. Now I think this Pope does more, but then they didn't do much of that at all. Right. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing yes, that moment. Yes, of course. So as we wrap up our conversation, is there something important or meaningful that you'd like to share that we haven't touched on yet? Yeah. A lot of people think, and I, I love to leave this because, you know, people are, there's a lot of comparing going on. We talk about self-esteem, you know, I want, first of all, we go down the whole social media path and we won't do that because that's, you know, some, a whole nother nut to crack, especially when it comes to comparing ourselves to everyone else. Right. Uh, we, we're getting what people want us to know about them. We are getting the perception many times of what they want us to know. But you've always heard about, you know, the grass is always greener on the other side. And I will offer you this. The grass is always greener where you water it. Mm. Where, you, where are you watering your grass? Are you watering more their grass? You're watering more your grass? You're taking care of your business? Are you taking care of your people? Are you taking care of your family? Are you showing the love and support and kindness to your family? Are you showing affection to your family? Are you saying kind words in your family or friends or, you know, workplace, whatever you want to, the grass is always greener where you, where you water it. Or is the grass on the other side, AstroTurf? Mm. Is it fake? Is it all a facade? Is it what they want you to perceive? So be real, real careful about that. Just take care of yourself and take care of your own and the rest will take care of itself. Pay attention to where you're watering your grass grass at. That's an important message. Important. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. And for the listeners who are, you know, look, I was captivated by the stories, right? And (laughs) and you really, I I told you I wrote a lot of things down. So I appreciate it You're such a good show host. I have to say, you're really good. (laughs) And that voice. Oh, you've got a voice for radio. Uh (laughs) (laughs) Uh-oh. Where... So where can uh, we find you at or where can they find you and learn mm-hmm. more about you and maybe even get in touch with you? Yeah, Clarissa Burt, pretty much straight across social. Just my name straight across. I'm not on Snapchat, but everywhere else. Uh, you can find <laughs> Clarissa Burt. Um, 
And, you know, the book is on, in Amazon, uh, on Amazon all over the world. And it's in Barnes and Noble, which is really cool. And on barnesandnoble.com. Sounds good. And I will tell you, there's also the audio version and the Kindle version. So no, no excuses. <laughs> <laughs> no excuses, I know that's people. Right. Get out yeah, there. I'll probably, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll get the Kindle version. Matter of fact, I think I was looking at it last night. So I think I got it last yeah. night, but I, I don't want to lie. So I'm going to make yeah. sure I know I was looking, <laughs> looking yeah. it up. So here's the last message. And that is just go love yourself. You know, oh, go love yourself. Beautiful. Go love, go, go, go guided and go love yourself. It is your sacred duty to do so. And there you have it. An insightful and inspiring, I hope, conversation with the remarkable Clarissa Burt. Thank you, Clarissa, for sharing your journey, your insights, your expertise with us today, uh, your accomplishment. You know, you you had a lot of accomplishments, and I did notice how you you know you steered the conversation with strategies and tips and and things yeah. like that. And that's yeah. that's appreciative. I mean, I really got, do. That, gotta, that's why I was writing so much. You got to take care of people, Lee. You got to take care of people. It's not about us, really. I mean, Absolutely. I'm not trying to sound like, you know, like I'm, we're going to be a nun next year. No, I'm just telling you, it's just the way it is. We got to be taking care of each other. We got to be loving each other more. And, uh, um, you know, this world, everybody's so angry and divided and it's okay yeah. to be, you know, to be beaten. You have road rage. And we just had another road rage thing here in Phoenix where there's somebody shot an 18 year old girl on the highway. I mean, enough. Stop. Mm. Stop, stop, stop. Let's throw some more love out there. Let's throw some more good out there. Let's, you know, if we can be really cool and really good with our own self-esteem, this kind of stuff, you know, again, when I tell you, if we could when I, my, my, take the high road, honesty, if we could, all, everybody was honest, what kind of world would, be? if everybody lived in integrity, what kind of world would this be? If right. everybody li- lived in gratitude, what kind of world would this be? And if everybody lived with honor, what kind of world would this be? Hmm. Thank you. And to the listeners, thank you as well for joining us on this episode of Hindsight, the podcast. Stay tuned for more thought provoking conversations with exceptional guests uh, like Clarissa. And remember to subscribe and follow us on your favorite podcast platform. Until next time. Thanks, Clarissa. Thank you, Lee. Thanks for tuning in to Hindsight, the podcast. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I did. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay updated on future episodes packed with inspiring stories. Before you go, leave me a message with your thoughts, feedback, or suggestions for future topics. And if you're loving what you hear, please take a moment to rate this episode. Your feedback helps me to grow and reach more listeners just like you. So remember, life's a journey. Stay tuned. Stay curious and keep gaining wisdom through the power of hindsight. Until next time. Oh, and don't forget, subscribe, leave a message, and rate this episode. When you look back in hindsight, everything is 2020. In hindsight, we make mistakes we're learning from.